We have Ben again, uh, Ben from Adelaide, originally from Perth. You moved over here. Yeah, moved here in March. Moved here in March. What, what was that? Was from my recommendations or? Yeah, a lot of that. Um, yeah. That's where it probably originated from. Yeah, um, originally from Perth. Yeah, just the cycling culture here, just the, the lifestyle culture. Yeah. It's just, it's definitely uh, relaxed. Well, it's not. It's not the most livable city. It's not ranked the most livable city for no reason. Yeah. It's, it is really good. We're sitting. We're just sitting in some cricket nets here. We live here in Kensington, Beulah Park area, eastern suburbs. It's just super chill. Um, there's a cricket game to our left. We're going to talk about type one diabetes today. So Ben, you're 25. You've been a type one diabetic since age six. Yeah, since age six. Yep. Two, and 2002. And so you wear a, an insulin pump down here just for proof of that. Someone says, "Oh, he's, he's not a type one." So that's what is that? That's like a little. You fill up with cartridges. Yeah, insulin. I guess I, I like to call it like an ex, external pancreas. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, it's got like a little reservoir of insulin. Yeah. Um, that'll get me through about three or four days. And yeah. Well. Yeah. So that will just that releases insulin based on your sugar levels, or uh, that's no. that's like an additional uh, modification you can have. Yeah. Like a CGM continuous glucose monitor, but this alone. Um, it has like a basal, uh, which is like a continuous every sort of three hours, yep. small drip of insulin. Yeah. And then you've got like your mealtime bolus. So IU, like units of insulin. Yeah, units. Of insulin. Yeah. Yep. And uh, since, as a type 1 diabetic, you've done a lot of di dietary experiments over the years? or Yeah, I've definitely uh, tried a few different, different things. High fat, low, lower fat. Yeah, I've definitely done the extremes. Yeah. Um, I've definitely come back to a, a plant centric low fat. Yeah. Low fat diet, so you found for your best insulin sensitivity, low fat, higher carb. Yep. Yeah, plants, def vegans, vegetarian. Def definitely call. low fat. Yeah, low fat. Low fat's the, the paramount. Yeah. And low fat for you, what's that gram wise? 10, 20, 30 grams of fat a day? Probably average is 40. But 40. If, yeah. I do notice if it goes to sort of 20 to uh, 15 to 20, maybe even 30, uh, this is quite a significant difference. Better feeling? Yeah. Yeah. So what about 10 grams of fat a day? Would you think that'd be even better for you? Yes. Yeah, you just feel a lot sharper. Better insulin sensitivity. Yeah. Yeah. And carbohydrate, how many grams of carbs a day you normally aim for? Uh, as a minimum, normally 500. 500, yeah. So it might be a little bit low on your standards, but I guess uh, on a big training day, if I could be anywhere up to 1,000. Yeah. Um, but a lot of that coming from just simple sugars. Yeah. Dates. Sim yeah, dates. Tables, white table sugar. White sugar. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you find there's any difference between dates? Uh, bananas, table sugar, or cornflakes, or brown rice, um, in terms of insulin sensitivity, or how much units of insulin you need? I'd say, I haven't really noticed, I haven't really done a test as such, Yeah, they're all very, very similar, very, very similar, comparable. That, that's what I find, like, that's why I find people say, oh, I don't eat, I don't eat sugar, but I eat, you know, cooked potatoes, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> it's a high glycemic index in the potatoes anyway, yeah. once you cook them up, so it's... <laughs> It is quite ironic. Um, what's uh, so you'd say that, yeah, if you want to increase your insulin resistance, what would you have to do? Add more sugar or add more Just fat? Start adding more fat. Add more fat. Yeah. Even uh, today, I had some peanut butter and uh, jam on toast, and yeah, that was for breakfast. I just. Just felt a bit sluggish. Whereas you know, if I just have jam on toast, yeah, a banana, I feel a lot. Just a lot more, you know, snappy, you like sharper. Yeah, sharper. Yeah. I noticed that as well. I noticed that as well. It's like, uh, yeah, I can tell people do the do the experiment. Yeah, do the experiment. Um, have you had times where you've cut out refined sugar, like no table sugar, and just done whole foods? Yeah, it, uh, I've done a few times. Like, you know, you sort of you buckle to the status quo. You know, like the marketing, this marketing on social media. Yeah, you just feel flat, like flat. As soon as you start adding sugar back, you know, you just you just get that snap, like. Yeah, yeah, snap. What is that like? Leg snapping your legs, snapping your dong, snapping your head, dong. snapping all three. <laughs> definitely in the dong, you notice. Yeah. What, what do you notice? You notice increased libido or just yeah, more increase, like definitely punch? Definitely increased libido, more yeah. punch. Like you just you more masculine just, presence. Yeah, you just turn up differently. You just show up, you know, more yeah. aggressive in a way, like not. Yeah. Like, you know. There's something about that. I think it just makes it easier to get those yeah, you know, carbohydrate needs so. to, with the adding in some refined sugar to your potatoes, to your rice, to your fruits. Yeah. Etc. I agree with that one. But that's why people, people like you have to try this. You know, like so many people are having eating disorder or orthorexia. They won't even try adding in some sugar. Yeah, what's it like, or decreasing the fat. Just like, a lot of people ask me about it. You know, just just do the test for yourself. Put yeah, some, put some sugar on your cornflakes. Like, yeah, as much like, as you crave. Put some sugar on your rice. Like, just do it. As much as you crave, like your body will just 
limit how much you need, won't it? It'd just be like, you'll be, if it's too much, you'll be like, oh, yeah, you, you, you can't finish the meal. You, you can't, can't finish the meal, like you're full. Oh. So. It, it, it is really crazy where people don't try these things. Or, I mean, they try it, but they're smashing heaps of fat as well. Yeah. I think and that's where a lot of people go wrong is, you know, they have high carb, but their fat's, you know, still too high. Yeah. 60, 70, 80, 100 grams. Yeah, I mean, so. two, 300 grams if you're yeah. doing the Jason Fung or the yeah. paleo thing. <laughs> what about, have you ever tried doing keto stuff? Or it's well, low, low, low carb? Probably, it went through phases, you know, probably five, six years ago, but you just feel like shit, so... How did you feel when you cut your carbs and did just, more high fat? Just flat and clogged, flat. like especially with exercise. You know, your legs, legs are like shit. Stuck. You just can't get. You can't get. Can't the, push the watts. Can't push the watts. You can't get your leg speed up. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, it's shocking. Like. And the more watts you can push, the more the women enjoy your presence <laughs> because you got more energy, you got more passion, you got more pep, you got more That's stamina. It. And so low watts is low masculine presence, or even a low feminine presence. The fun with women who do low carb or whatever. Um, they're, they're not as present as a, as their twin sister, hypothetically, who's carved up, etc. Yeah, you, can, you can always tell a, uh, a low-carb woman. A woman. A man. Just How do you tell? Off, off of the fairies, you know? Yeah. Sort of space Cadet and... Space, yeah, Space Cadet. Too yeah. flaky, and it's like, oh man, come on, like... I mean, all of us are up and down as it is, but when you're not getting enough carbs, you're really up and down even more. How many units of insulin do you use now, on average? I use... So I've got the basal dose is about 16 to 17 units. 16, 17 units, yeah. And then... A day? Yeah, yeah. and then uh, basal... Oh, sorry, meal, meal time bolus. Meal time bolus. Probably 15 to 20? Yeah. Yeah, we'll say 20, maximum 25 units a day, so... Yeah. What do we got there? Say 25 at 15, 35, maximum 40, I'd yep, say. 40. Probably closer to 30. Yeah, what if you're eating like, you know, 150, 200 grams of fat a day? Like the average oh, person fuck. is doing be double that figure I'd yeah. say so. and if you use more insulin would you weigh more yeah so actually you know, that? earlier this year I was actually got stuck in Sydney for about three months that's right um, and I was I couldn't sort of get out and do too much like I was out in the sticks and I noticed my basal insulin went up from 16 to about 25 units so and my meal time uh, carb ratios went up and I put on about 5 to 7 kilos so I was weighing about 90 92 kilos yep and that's, you know, I was training the same, but I just, I guess I wasn't active. It was, it was a more sedentary sort of period. Um, and I was eating high fat. High, eating high fat, yeah. Um, but yeah, that period of time, when I was using increased amounts of insulin, that was definitely a uh, Increased weight. the weight. Yeah. So if you were, if you're eating more fat and you're smashing out the cage, you could probably get away with it, you reckon? Or uh, still not as much? For me, my personal experience is, that fat still gonna impact you even if you train. Yeah, like I've I've been doing some big weeks sometimes. Like still, you know, you, don't, you still weigh the same if you're eating too much fat. Yeah. Whereas if, if I'm eating just you know rice, sugar, beans, fruits, Low dates, fat. Um, the, the weight just drops off. The weight drops off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the yeah the fat really uh, really really hits that weight loss. Yeah. That's what I find a lot of ultra cyclists. I was just thinking from the terms of the insulin sensitivity thing, but I guess it doesn't because the weight can still creep up. Like you see a lot of ultra cyclists I know, like gun riders, like people can do way more Ks a month than I can do. Guys, my height, and they're like, you know, something like 100 kilos. You know, and they're just smashing the bacon and eggs and they're yeah, doing the ultra rides, man. You know, it's I'm def- just like, man. The, uh, it seems the more, more fat you eat, the more fat you seem to store. Yeah, like, yeah. There's an Adelaide guy here, he said he did, he did a 400K ride on no food. Yeah, fuck you man. know, like that's, man, that's... That's intense. Like, they would need probably like 50 grand to do that. that, that fuck, I reckon that would have fucked him up for the, the week. Yeah, like you'd, you'd feel like so I cooked. Did, sort of one ride I didn't eat enough a couple of days ago, and that, that fucked me for three or four days. Yeah. And just, then I we, went out again and fueled correctly, did the same ride, Yeah. and felt great. Stomping, away, like. stomping, yeah. Just, yeah. By fact, you just mean fatigued and like listless. And yeah, like you're like, like, chronically glycogen depleted. Yeah, glucose exhausted, yeah. lacking motivation. Um, like so, a, yeah. lot, a lot of the chronic fatigue syndrome people get is base well a lot of it comes from this chronic glycogen depletion 100 <laughs> percent. yeah like that that's the number one thing you'll see with people do like cut the carbs you'll see the training drops right down when before they really love to train and, and do a lot of stuff and they just they just can't train as much or their times go down you know um i'm training a lot less because i'm trying to get up to 90 kg um, so i'm not really doing that specific stuff but uh 
but you see people who want to get fitter and want to get better and their times just drop and it's like hang on something's going wrong that's that's really unhealthy sad to see but i see that a lot of the last 25 years of racing uh, so your tip for diabetics what would it be type one and two just, just cut your fat as low as you can go yeah, and cut, see how you go fat. i guess probably a good start is just to eat a plant-centric diet you know like it doesn't have to be exclude plant exclusive like i find following like an exact framework can sort of be a bit toxic for some people but sort of burns people out but following you know a 90 percent yeah or i mean you can do like i said that you can do like a two-week challenge yeah and see and see what your sugars are at yeah you know and then, then you can go okay well, maybe i can make some tweaks or things in here allowances or discrepancies but i generally find yeah it's, it's i find framework it can be toxic for some but also can be good because it gives them people like like a net like okay we're, yeah definitely we're, we're in this this is this is the parameters and we can well, operate from that being you know disciplined like that is probably a good good test even, just, you know, just, just to experience yeah. it yeah just to go through that how you feel i i would say you can agree or disagree on this one i would say people do t- under 10 grams of fat a day you know which is a really low fat and as as much white rice sweet fruit sugar um corn flakes etc as they want what do you think about that yeah, as, as that's probably that's the hardest part is to keep the fat under 10 grams cause yeah it's, that it's, can be quite difficult is it everything almost. unless unless you are just eating corn flakes and rice, rice sugar, sugar sugar fruit yeah yeah, yeah. which then it's quite easy it is very easy like yeah. you follow that framework. but I, I think everyone should do that for at least a week especially diabetics yeah and just you look at your sugars, what happens to your sugars and how you feel. And then that's just like, then you know, yes or no. You can, you can carry on with that if you want, or you can say, no, it's not for me, it's too rigid. Too rigid. But at least then you'll know you'll have direction and truth uh, when it comes to insulin sensitivity versus just be a crowd around us in this like excess insulin anabolic world of like trying to lose weight, but you're just getting fatter and fatter and you're like 120 kilo jab of the heart. And, and for some people, they're sumo wrestlers, like they need to be fat, and that's okay, you know. But some, a lot of people out there, they're, they're, they're obese. Like we've got someone walking across here, we won't show them, but they're quite a large specimen. <laughs> and, you know, if they fell on that dog, they'd squash the dog flat. And I hope they don't fall on that dog because they're cute water collies. But I, I would know that lady over there doesn't want to be that big. She would love, is that a guy or a girl? Is it pregnant or? Could be a pregnant man or a pregnant woman. It's actually a guy. But either way, there's an individual over there who's got a quite large pregnant belly and they, they could be a 50 year old pregnant lady or it could be a 50 year old pregnant man but they don't want to be that fat but they've been lied to they send fat's good blah 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 carbs are bad and you just, I just we just know we can walk over there and talk to them and they'll be like ah oh, sugar's bad you know blah 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 we know that um, so that's our goal here is just to educate people give them options alright any closing thoughts Ben or pretty much that's it yeah leave it to that I think watch your fat intake go from there cheers saying if you hypothetically were cast for a movie extra today you had to go to 100 kilos in the next two months what would you do you're at 85 you'd now increase your uh, insulin usage but obviously to do that without going hypoglycemic you'd have to just eat more fat yeah which would then bring up your baseline uh, requirement for insulin so because if you added in more insulin now with your low-fat diet you go hyper all the yeah, time. yeah that, that's obviously quite a dangerous scenario so you, by adding in dietary fat that blocks insulin's effectiveness yeah so therefore you just require more insulin and that insulin more insulin you use the higher your weight yeah yeah that's why right. still uh, bodybuilders often use insulin yeah. very dangerous but uh yeah very uh, it's great to be able to see that simplicity yeah